Hello everybody, it is Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com, creator of SexGeekSummerCamp.com, and I am so proud and an honor to have Wendy Stregar, Stregar <laughs> the CEO, the loveologist, the um, founder of Good Clean Love, which is one of my favorite lubes, and I can only show you a pillow pack because the big bottle of it I already ran out of because I use it all the time. Um, and Wendy and Good Clean Love, uh, welcome. And thank you for being sponsors, this year's proud sponsors to Sex Geek Summer Camp. And, on, and thanks for making time to jump on Skype so that the people of the world can get to know you a little bit. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Thanks, Reed. Um, and it's actually the best testimonial of all when you run out of good, clean love, right? Yeah, exactly. So just this morning, my son was telling me that one of his middle school friends just moved to Seattle for a new job, met a girl on some app, and before they did what they did, they, she pulled out a bottle of good, clean love. So that actually really impresses my kids. Oh, that product goes everywhere. You know, my, my, my middle school friends that he was so, mortified that they would know that I was doing that in middle school, you know. So this is the thing is like, what would it be like if I walked in, you know, as a young adult um, and and saw on my friend's night tables uh, my mom's lube, basically, <laughs> and not just my mom's lube, but my mom created the lube itself. Um, so I'm super excited to be um, uh, exposing the campers um, to your product. And you have a lot of really neat, nerdy stuff going on um, because you're, you were that person who sat down with me and we had like a, we went down the rabbit hole of, of lube technology and you're doing some amazing stuff. So please like, like educate us in, in two minutes about so what's going on. So thanks, Reed. That's really kind of you. And yes, I do remember those long conversations about lubricant. And really, it's actually been the absence of that science that the lubricant industry has suffered from for such a long time. You know, um, propylene glycol, polyethylene glycol, methyl and propyl paraben, I thought for years and years were allergens. And that's what I used to tell you, actually. But in fact, actually, it's a biophysics nightmare. Really, what they are is just really petrol chemically concentrated, you know, so if they're so heavy compared to human tissue that, mm -hmm. you know, what we don't know is that that kind of what it's called molality, and so hyper isomolality, mm -hmm. it, it, make, it makes, it's toxic for vaginas. And because those products have largely been tested on rabbit vaginas, guinea pig vaginas, um, mice vaginas, which are, have no resemblance really to the human vagina. Yeah. The human vagina has the lowest acidic pH of any vagina in the animal kingdom. Who knew? And so when products are way heavier, what happens is that all this moisture is pulled out of the cells. You create this excess of moisture and, um, and that excess dilutes the lactobacilli response, which is the immune response in the vagina that keeps us well, pushes up the pH, and before long you have bacterial vaginosis or BV as it's widely known. And actually, here's the really sad thing is that most women don't know about BV and they even worse don't know when they have it. Yeah. So 84% of the time that goes undiagnosed and then you're 60% more susceptible to HIV and STDs and three times as likely to transmit those illnesses. So that's like a lot of science. It's a big and deal. It, it took me 10 years to learn that science. Um, I mean, I was doing this for a long time and saying to people forever that people are allergic to these ingredients. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it had never been an allergy. So we like to say at Good Clean Love that we work every day to align science and love. Mm -hmm. So we provide products that actually make you better and actually have pleasure more accessible to you instead of burning and itching and a lot of unintended consequences of product that really probably never should go on the vagina. Uh, oh. And you also have a, a blog, which is makinglovesustainable.com. Right. And, is, and, and do, you, do you geek out on that stuff there? Or yeah. What? So, you know, the Making Love Sustainable side, actually, it's kind of funny because you have to kind of keep those worlds separate. Because if you try to sell your product when you're teaching people how to love people, then they're like, oh, she's a charlatan. She's just trying to sell her product. Sure. 
even when I'm telling them stuff about safety and health, they still feel like, you know, so mostly on making love sustainable, you know, I have been working for 10 years to try to add the relationship back into mm -hmm. intimacy, gotcha. which I feel like is something that uh, gets really short shrift in our culture. You know, we actually have sex before we even go to coffee a lot of times now. Mm -hmm. And so... <laughs> So, you know, I mean, this sort of tells my age, but it's not like that stuff wasn't happening when I was younger, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, you know, we didn't have a whole, you know, internet. We didn't have hookup apps back then. Exactly. But still, people did that. What's happened is that we've replaced conversation about what we like, about what feels good, even like among girlfriends or, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's be, it's like been, become these like short little texts. Yeah. Oh. Another bad sex night. Oh, LOL, I hear you. So what happens from that is that we have no language yeah. to like even really express these really deep, intimate, whatever they are, intimate desires, intimate fears, intimate injuries, you know? I mean, and so I think what happens is that after three or four times that you find yourself in a situation that you don't know how to get out of, maybe it was a yes when you started, but you don't know how to get back to no when it doesn't feel right anymore. We don't have any code words for that. And in fact, the lack of language, I think, creates these scenarios where you can really have your erotic soul be really wounded. Mm -hmm. And if that happens two, three, four, five times when you're a young adult, you know, you start to not trust yourself sexually. Yeah. I think it promotes through having a lot more bad decisions. Yeah. It's like emotional scar tissue. And if you don't know how to talk about it, how can you speak up in the moment? If you can't, if you're like, if you can't talk about it. With your friends, when you're not having sex, how are you supposed to speak up during sex? Exactly. And then if you just keep having more and more bad experiences, yeah. And I think actually also there's a way in which our negative anticipation attracts negative experiences. So there's that whole magnetic thing. Mm -hmm. When we expect it to be painful, it will be. Yeah. And in fact, in sexual dysfunction in general, we find that, right? Like, you know, you, you know, young people also, we just did a 200 person survey across campuses nationwide. And, you know, pe young people use lube less than rarely, you mm -hmm. know, and, and women, because yeah. it's, Cool. I don't know. You're old if you need lube. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah. so if you're inebriated, you don't know the person. Uh, you you know you don't speak up at all to begin with. Right. How, and so uh, then you're probably dry when you're having sex. Mm -hmm. And then because you're dry, you're um, which means you're not lubricating because you're inebriated and anxious or whatever the scene. And then you have pain painful sex. And then the next time, because you sort of ha have that memory, sort of that body memory, then it's really easy to like have painful sex even before. And I mean, then you just have to think all sex is painful and why should I bother? And yeah. Well, or you just kind of like steal yourself for this experience. But, you know, and and there's a really interesting book that just came out, uh, Girls and Sex by Peggy Orenstein, with a lot of really, really incredible and a little bit discouraging information about how many women, even now in 2016, are still saying the same thing their mothers did and their mothers before that. Well, if he liked it, then, I, then I'm happy. Yeah. And you just came out with a book as well, right? And I actually have a book, actually, which hopefully will be sort of healing in that piece, which is called Sex That Works. Mm -hmm. And it's an intimate guide to awakening your erotic life. Mm. Because I really think when you have erotic injuries what, at whatever age, because it happens even to much older women, you know, mm -hmm. um, and men. I mean, it's not a book just for women. Yeah. It's also for men. I mean, it happens to every one of us. You know, sexual dysfunction is not just a female issue. So anyway, the book actually tries to give people a lot of ideas and permission to really live into that erotic space that we all have that makes us human. Well, thank you for all the work that you do. And I just want to end because, again, like geek to geek, yeah. you're doing some stuff. I heard through the grapevine in Colorado, some yeah, yeah. Edgy, like, cutting edge lube stuff. What's going yeah. on? So we um, actually are about to launch a water-based and actually the only water-based CBD lubricant in the, in, in the country that I know of. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dispensaries, because I live in Oregon, that have a lube, quote-unquote, which is just defractionated coconut with some hemp, you know, cannabis oil in it. Okay. But we're using organic Danish hemp and um, 
uh, and we're and we made this beautiful silicone like alternative so we call it a natural silicone alternative lube and you know we can't say that CBD it, you know I mean what I can tell you about CBD is that it's one of the most powerful an analgesics and antioxidants mm -hmm. so you know I think that people who have painful sex might feel something differently when they use that lube that's the aspiration so thank you for bringing science and and research like for even funding the yeah. amount of research that you do so that you feel comfortable you know telling people what your lube's yeah. about like thank you for putting your money in those areas because not all companies do that um, and thank you for making what you're learning research wise accessible to like non-sciencey folks so that folks all over just don't feel as scared and feel more empowered. I'm so excited um, to be bringing Lube to camp. Um, and in another video that you and I had done where the sound quality wasn't so good, you, you had mentioned that maybe one day you would come to camp and I'm just I, gonna put that out there now. I will come to camp for sure. This year we have a show at that same weekend, but um, I really wanna put it on my, on my calendar because I'm so about having more fun. Well, and today I we just want people to, meet, to meet you. Yeah, no, I, I would be. It would be really fun. I'd love to hang out with the campers yeah. and just share what I know. And and I definitely need to be having more fun in life. So well, we'll try to give you as much fun. But of course, the, the person who made good clean love um, is, I hope, having some some good yeah. clean fun. At some I, point. Yeah, no. So I definitely <laughs> am. You know, I uh, I've been married for thirty three years, and I have amazing over the top hour-long orgasmic sex at least once a week. Well, we'll have to shoot more videos so I can we can learn your secrets. Um, Wendy, thank you so much. Um, I'm, super, I'm just so excited about the company to get the message out there, so thanks for shooting this video. And everyone, leave a comment, share the video, uh, and Wendy, thank you again. Thank you, Reed. Bye. I hope this business geekery was useful for you. If you'd like to continue with the brain sex, click on subscribe up here. If you want to follow me on social media, right here, ladies and gentlemen. Next video below. And if you'd like your very own Sex Geek Summer Camp t-shirt, then just click right here, right now.